In this video, I'm going to show you all the latest and most exciting breakthroughs in glaucoma treatment and prevention. We're going to be talking about new technology, new research, new supplements, and new medications that may just change the way we eye doctors approach glaucoma treatment going forward. By the way, I'm Dr. Michael Chua. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist and I make videos to help you see better, look better, and feel better too. The first innovation we'll talk about are negative pressure goggles. These special goggles are currently under development by a company called Equinox Ophthalmic. And the premise of this technology is that you wear these goggles over your eyes at night. The goggles are connected to a special pump and a computer so that your doctor can program the pump to create a negative pressure vacuum chamber around your eyes. The underlying theory of how these goggles work goes back to those concepts we learned back in physics class. If you put a balloon in a reduced pressure chamber, look what happens. So pressure is basically force applied to a certain area. There's gas inside the balloon pushing out, and there's also gas in the chamber pushing in. If we reduce the pressure outside the balloon, then the force on the inside of the balloon will be greater than the force on the outside of the balloon. So the balloon will start to expand. And if we remember the ideal gas law from high school physics, pressure times volume equals N or the amount of substance times R or the ideal gas constant times T for temperature. So as we increase the volume of the balloon while keeping all other variables constant, then the pressure inside the balloon will decrease. A real life example of this phenomenon is if we bring a bag of chips with us on a plane. At ground level, where we have regular ground pressure, the bag of chips is deflated. But as we increase in altitude, the surrounding pressure is lower. Look what happens to our bag of chips. It gets super inflated as the pressures try to equalize across the bag. So the researchers at Equinox Ophthalmic are using these same principles with their negative pressure goggles. The thought is, if they basically create this carefully calibrated vacuum chamber around our eyes, then decrease the surrounding pressure around our eyes, then the eye pressure inside our eyes try to equalize with the reduced pressure outside of our eyes, causing a lowering of our intraocular pressure, all without the risk of side effects of medication or surgery. And the latest data from their research, it's impressive. By the way, full disclosure, I have no financial interest in this company or product or with any of the products or companies I mentioned in this video. In this study, published in the Journal of Glaucoma in August 2023, researchers from Equinox shared the latest safety and efficacy results from their negative pressure goggles. They took 58 patients and randomized one of their eyes to receive the negative pressure goggles and the other eye served as a control. At the three month visit, 89.7% of study eyes had a 20% decrease in intraocular pressure, while only 3.4% of control eyes showed a 20% decrease in intraocular pressure compared to baseline. So impressive efficacy with these negative pressure goggles, but the investigators did report some side effects. They noted that 17.2% of study eyes suffered eyelid swelling compared to 7.8% of control eyes. As these negative pressure goggles progress along the different stages of clinical development, I'm looking forward to learning more about their long-term safety and efficacy. The one problem I can envision with this technology is comfort and compliance with the goggles. Something that obstructive sleep apnea patients often mention is that the masks they wear for their CPAP machines overnight are uncomfortable. Or they mention that they feel like they're suffocating while using their CPAP machines at night. And because these masks are so uncomfortable, they basically don't use their CPAP machines even if these machines are supposed to help them breathe better at night. And so if these negative pressure goggles are also uncomfortable for patients, or if they're causing too many side effects like eyelid swelling, then patients may end up not ever using them, which will limit their effectiveness. But it's still a really interesting technology and an innovative way to achieve lower eye pressures without medications or surgery. The next innovation I'll talk about is the SensiMed Triggerfish. The SensiMed Triggerfish is a special contact lens monitor with a built-in sensor that provides continuous intraocular or eye pressure monitoring. Now, let's take a step back and understand why intraocular pressure monitoring is so important for glaucoma management. Well, the eye is filled with a clear fluid called aqueous humor, which is produced by a structure called the ciliary body. This fluid flows out of the eye through a small drain called the trabecular meshwork. If this drainage system is blocked or isn't functioning well, then the fluid cannot flow out of the eye properly, causing eye pressure to increase. That increased eye pressure can lead to damage of the optic nerve, and as optic nerve damage progresses, that can cause loss of our peripheral vision. So one of the key ways we eye doctors treat glaucoma is by lowering your eye pressure. Now, the current standard of how we monitor eye pressure in glaucoma patients is we check the pressure in the office every few months using specially calibrated equipment, such as tonometry or an eye care device. The problem is research shows us that our eye pressure can fluctuate greatly throughout the day. 
This chart, for example, shows the fluctuation of a typical patient's eye pressure. When we see them in the office in the morning, they may be 16 and in normal range. But overnight, that pressure can increase by 6 points or more. So if we're only measuring eye pressure at one instance every few months, it's clear that we're missing out on a lot of information to make our glaucoma treatment decisions. And if we take a look at how diabetes management has changed in recent years, we can see the incredible value of continuous monitoring. These continuous glucose monitors, or CGMs, are gaining popularity very quickly because of all the powerful information they provide. A few years ago, the only way you'd be able to know how your blood sugars were doing is you need to get your blood work checked at your doctor's office or lab so they can run the test for you. Then, companies started making home glucose monitors where you would need to stick your finger with a tiny needle and run a small blood sample on a home device. That was better because that gave you the ability to check your glucose at home. But still, you would need to remember to do a finger stick so you can get a glucose reading. But now, with these continuous glucose monitors, you basically stick a wearable sensor onto your arm, connect it to an app on your phone, and you can get continuous monitoring of your blood sugar 24-7. This way, you can tell if certain foods are causing your blood sugars to spike, or if maybe your sugar goes up after a night of poor sleep, or to see if your medications are controlling your sugars adequately. They've really been a game changer in terms of diabetes management. And so, in the realm of glaucoma, Right now we have in-office pressure testing. And more recently, there's even home eye pressure devices such as the eye care home device, which allows you to check your eye pressure at home. The drawback of this device is that it costs $3,000, which puts it out of reach for many people. And of course, just like the finger stick glucose monitors, you have to remember to check your own eye pressure a few times a day. The SensiMed Triggerfish is kind of the next generation of pressure monitoring because it's a wearable, continuous eye pressure monitor that will give patients and doctors much more data than ever before. Now, there are a few challenges that the SensiMed researchers will need to address before their wearable contact lens goes mainstream. First is that the contact lens doesn't actually measure intraocular pressure directly like we traditionally do. Instead, the contact lens has sensors which detect changes in the curvature of the cornea or the front surface of the eye. The premise is that as our intraocular pressures change, these pressure fluctuations cause changes in the shape of our cornea. And so the Triggerfish Smart Contact Lens monitors the changes in the curvature of our cornea and sends this information to a coil which would be embedded in a pair of glasses or a sleep mask. The coil then sends this information to an analyzer which can plot out your eye pressures throughout the day. So the sensor basically translates this corneal curvature data into eye pressures rather than measuring eye pressures directly. More testing will need to be done to make sure that these trigger fish readings are perfectly calibrated so that they're actually giving us accurate measurements of your eye pressure. This is because we need to trust the data from the pressure sensor in order to make proper adjustments based on the readings. The other question is cost. Right now, the reported cost for one eye, one trigger fish contact lens monitoring for 24 hours is $650. And so trying to figure out how this technology will be economically feasible for patients, doctors, and insurance companies is still a challenge that will need to be addressed. Okay. Besides the cool technology like Equinox's negative pressure goggles or SensiMed smart contact lenses, what new therapies are out there to help our patients with glaucoma? Well, there has been a lot of emerging research about different supplements that can help us to protect our optic nerves from the damage from glaucoma. Many studies have shown us that as we all get older, our stores of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide or NAD decrease. NAD is a critical component of the energy metabolism pathways in our mitochondria. You can think of the mitochondria as the little engines in each of our cells. We feed ourselves glucose and fat, and our mitochondria converts these nutrients into usable energy. And in order for our mitochondria to function correctly, they need adequate stores of NAD. The theory is, if the mitochondria in our optic nerve cells are lacking proper amounts of NAD, that makes them extra vulnerable to damage from glaucoma. And so, more studies are showing us that by adding nicotinamide or vitamin B3 supplements to our diet, we can increase our stores of NAD and help to prevent the progression of glaucoma. For example, this study from 2021 from a team at Columbia University showed that giving patients with moderate glaucoma vitamin B3 and pyruvate supplements actually improved their visual field results. Now, the published studies on nicotinamide B3 supplementation on glaucoma are still relatively small, but there are now several long-term, larger, randomized control trials currently ongoing to further investigate the possible benefits of vitamin B3. Many of these studies have estimated completion dates in the next two years, so we'll start to see much more data regarding vitamin B3 supplementation for the treatment of glaucoma in the next few years. Okay, so we talked about neuroprotective supplementation with vitamin B3. What about eye drops? 
Before we talk about the next emerging treatment for glaucoma, I wanted to tell you about my optimized newsletter. If you want to get the latest science-backed information on how to improve your vision and health delivered straight to your email, you can visit my website at michaelchuamd.com to sign up. So, a recent randomized control trial published in the Journal of Glaucoma in 2020 looked at the use of citicoline eye drops as a way to protect the optic nerve in the treatment of glaucoma. In this study, researchers took 80 patients with moderate open angle glaucoma and randomized them to either receive citicoline eye drops or a placebo drop three times a day for three years. After the three years of follow-up, they found that patients who received citicoline eye drops had significantly less vision loss through visual field testing using a test called the 10-2 visual field test compared to patients who received placebo eye drops. And they also found that patients who took the citicoline eye drops had less progressive thinning of their optic nerves as measured by OCT nerve scans compared to placebo patients. These are encouraging results supporting the use of citicoline eye drops as a supplemental treatment of glaucoma. But we want to remember that this is a relatively small study with only 80 patients, and we'd like to wait for more data with more patients before making broad recommendations regarding the use of citicoline eye drops. But if larger studies confirm these possibly neuroprotective effects of citicoline and it maintains a good safety profile, then we may see citicoline being offered and recommended more frequently to patients with glaucoma in the upcoming years. Okay, so we reviewed some of the most exciting new treatment options in the pipeline for glaucoma from negative pressure goggles to continuous pressure monitoring smart contact lenses to exciting vitamin B3 or nicotinamide supplementation and citicoline eye drops. I hope this information was helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can get updated on our latest videos. And if you live in the Los Angeles, Orange County or Inland Empire area and wanna get your glaucoma checked out or want an eye examination, feel free to visit our website or give our phone number a call to make an appointment today. I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Pine Hills Eye Care. See you next time.